calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, The Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za. The Gardener Masterclass is proudly brought to you by Macro Home and Garden. Visit macro.co.za to find out more about our range to solve most common gardening problems. macro.co.za And Stark Airs, the leading vegetable seed supplier in South Africa. Are you ready to grow? Stark Airs, seeds of success. Good morning, you beautiful people. It's a gorgeous day here in KZN. I wish I was feeling as gorgeous as the weather is. Um, I've got a bit of the winter lurgy, um, which means I should be eating more of these. Yeah, these. See? Sweet. Gorgeous. Delicious. Fresh. Mmm, fresh. That's what it's all about. Guys, today, although it's winter, and I know some of you have got layers on, um, but I see that around the rest of the country, what I'm checking through on the YouTube and the Facebook that's coming through, the weather's kind of okay, mostly around the country. Well, except for PE, it's windy there. But you did have some rain. You had a bit of rain, hallelujah. Um, guys, I know it's a bit cold, but remember those of you that are on the eastern seaboard, that are in inland and Mapumalanga and those areas, yes, you can still grow. And most importantly, those of you that are in the colder areas, there are ways to get around it. Because if you have not done some of the things that I'm going to go through with you this morning, you're going to be missing out. And when it's time for those beautiful winter stews, oh, mm, yeah, you know those stews, you know, with like a, a nice knuckle or mm, a piece of lamb neck. And even if you're a veggie, you know, you can add some veggie spices in there, but you know what I'm saying. Those beautiful soups, chunky. Come on. Do you want to use the stuff that you buy from the shops? No. No. No, no, no. You want to use the stuff that you have grown. Um, there's, a, there's a satisfaction in it that I, 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 I truly can't, I can't express beyond. Um... There's a satisfaction in it that fills your soul. And for those of you that are watching, um, I'd like to know from you, what have you picked recently? What, what is it that you've picked recently that gave you that proud moment? And look, even if it had a few holes in it, that's also okay. Because you know what? We've got to share. Um, and just because things are perfect doesn't mean it's healthy. Perfection is not always a good thing. Um, they also say it's got something to do with insanity, but we're not going to go there this morning. But um, folks, welcome to The Gardener Live. Um, it's really great to be alongside you. And uh, I've kind of missed you all. Life has been a bit hectic, but I really have missed you all. We, we kind of started setting up and grabbing and pulling things out the garden this morning. And I was like, sure, where have you been? Where have you been? Um, so, while I mentioned talk with a mouthful, which my mother told me not to do, I want to see um, who's with us this morning and, uh, and let's get an idea on what you have picked recently. Recently. And that's not out of a packet from your fridge. You got me. All right. Uh, Marina, good morning. Um, Jenny Burr, good morning. Mm, homegrown just tastes better. Still have spinach in the ground. Well, you can have spinach all year round. All year round. Okay, in the summer rainfall, you could get a bit, of, um, a bit of rust. But guys, you just pick those leaves off and you just hand my hand. 
and you cut back on the watering. Um, but you can have spinach all year round. And spinach can grow, and what we call spinach in South Africa is actually Swiss chard. Yes, yeah, Swiss chard. And they, they can get huge and, and almost treat it as a perennial, not an annual. It, it, it's a perennial. And let that bazooka flower. Ha! And the bees come and visit your back garden. Um, Renata, good morning. Oh, oh, look at your list. Baby spinach, baby carrots, tomatoes, lettuce and parsley. Okay, 10 out of 10. Um, Jean October, good morning. I missed you too. <laughs> oh, you guys make my heart full. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Fiona, Fiona. Is this Fiona from Builders? Fiona, good morning from a cool Cape Town. Oh, Fiona, mm, is that a heart? Uh, I can't read. How do you do a heart? Uh, see, I'm not good at this. It, how do you do a heart? Like that. Sending you a big love. A big drikkie. Yeah, big, big drikkie. Um, Debbie Burton, good morning from Leisure Bay. Ooh, ooh, lovely part of the world. Bitty van Grienen, it's nice to shop in one's own garden. Isn't it nice that it's for free? <laughs> um, Jenny Bear, um, uh, what, 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 what did you say? Sorry, I lost you there. Um, um, okay, okay, okay. Uh, oh, uh, Tabi, Tabi has picked carrots. Um, Tabi, everybody keeps jumping because everybody's jumping on board here. Um, so I missed that part. Uh, what did Tabi grow? Um, help me out there, someone. My eyes are not so good this morning because I ran a fever last night of monumental proportions. Proportions. Oh, carrot, carrots, radish, aubergines, and peas. Good job, good job. Um, let's see what. Um, Sybil, I wore my dress on Tuesday, then had to change again. What? Huh? Uh, oh, it was cold. Oh, just checking. I thought maybe you were going to a dance or something. Um, lettuce, thyme, and rosemary. Lovely. Bonita, um, good morning. Maureen Francis, good morning, good morning. Moo. Um, good morning. You, you're picking ferns. Okay, well, uh, fern shoots are, are edible, 100% fern shoots. The maidenhair fern is the sweetest, the sweetest, most nutritional, little, little, little thing. So you pick those, uh, you eat them raw, you can also just add them into salads or you can literally just quickly, like a flash fry, they come out all crispy and it's like eating like a like a pretzely thing. <laughs> yeah, very, very nice. Because the bracken fern, the bracken fern that grows all over, whether you're in the Cape Winelands, um, whether it's growing in the marshes there, uh, whether you're in um, Gauteng and you can see that bracken fern, that bracken fern, that beautiful curly, curly, curly thing, that is used and it's been used for centuries by the Maui's as well as an edible crop. Mm. Just because... You don't see it in the shop. Doesn't mean you can't eat it. Okay. Alrighty. Um, but guys, we, we, we're going to go through some, some basics this morning on, on how to get it right. And the biggest mistake, one, one of the biggest mistakes that I've seen when I come across folks um, in terms of veggie gardening is the following. We get inspired. Oh my goodness. We go and visit one of those open gardens, or probably we go to a wine farm. Oh, here's the one, we go to a wine farm. We're sitting there on the stoop on the deck, they don't even call it a stoop there, I think that's too much of a common word. You're sitting on the patio overlooking the valley, um, and on your right is this most amazing, pristine, absolutely immaculate veggie garden with Everything looking like little soldiers, beautiful and pristine. And you get inspired, especially after two Chardonnettes. Um, and you are ready to go home and garden. You are ready to go home and make a veggie garden. Look, I know when lockdown happened, we all became subsistence farmers. We were going to feed our families. How did that go? Mm, how did that go? Right. A few fundamental mistakes. Um, and this is where we get it wrong. Number one, number one, the most important in the entire world is sun, is absolute sun. Minimum five to six hours a day. If you do not get that abandoned project, 
Minimum five to six hours of sunlight a day is crucial. Okay, number two, we only eat the elephant in bite-sized chunks. Depending on your needs and assess your needs. Are you a busy mom? Are you a busy dad? Are you running between two households, picking up kids, dropping kids off, ballet, this, soccer, that, choir practice? Uh, do you know, we're all busy. Make the veggie garden according to the size of the time you have to put in. Because the worst thing is that we set high expectations and we just can't keep up. And we feel like we're taking one step forward and we take 20 step backs. Okay, so how big a garden do you need? And if you're starting out and if you're a greenie, if you're a novice, you're going to start really small. And I mean really small. And there's nothing wrong about that. It's about as your confidence grows. I mean, um, let's think of a rake netling. Pristine swimmer. Most amazing. He never got there in one year. No, it's a, it, it's a journey. It's a journey of growing your own confidence because the worst thing we can do is beat our confidence down. When we don't get that right, we're like, oh no, this gardening thing is so just for my mother. I mean, honestly, I just can't do it. Oh my, oh my got it right. Yeah, but Omar's also had lots of time, hey? They didn't have Facebook and all those things. Um, and they had lots of time on their hands. So we've got to adjust our veggie garden and our expectations according to our lifestyle. And, and it, it's so important. And you might think I'm absolute kookaloo, but it's 100% true. Okay, number three. Lesson number three. Never, ever, ever sow the entire packet of seed all at once. <laughs> I know some of you have done that, but I mean, <laughs> is, I'm going to give you an example. Yeah, carrots. Carrots. Lovely, lovely carrots. Oh, we all dream of beautiful, straight, long carrots. <laughs> no, oh, how bitterly disappointed you could have been. Okay, but don't sow the whole packet because there are about 6,000 seeds in here. True story, 6,000. Imagine if they all came up at once, over sown, too many. What do you do? You've got like a veggie garden just full of carrots. And what are you going to do with them? So it's about smaller intervals regularly and be consistent. Consistency. Okay, so when you have opened your packet of seed, and I got this one out this morning, this is beautiful kale. Um, we've sown some kale in the veggie garden. We, so we sowed it directly because as we sow it and as it starts germinating, because it's the time for it now, it's the perfect, perfect time for it. Um, like super veg of note, um, you can do it deep fried. You can just tear it up into salads. We eat it with stir fries. Um, you can take it and wrap it up. Um, and when you throw a little piece of bacon into the kale, well, I know the one kind of outweighs the other in terms of like nutrition and all that, but it really is yummy. It's super yummy. But when we've opened the pack and we've sown what we've needed, we then take it and we just put it in the fridge. And that way your seed lasts so, so much longer. Okay. But it's important as well that you do date when you bought the seed or when you open it. Because seed is not meant to last forever. No, negative. Okay. It, it's, uh, it does go over. It does happen. It does lose its vigor. So if you have got a packet of seed that has been sitting 10 years in that drawer over there, um, the first thing I would recommend that you do is you toss it and you go and buy a new packet. Um, and what's very important, guys, and I get this question all the time, all the time. How do I know that the seed that they've got on the shelves is fresh? Is it fresh? Well, the, the, the seed companies have have a whole lot of very, very strict rules. Very strict rules. Number one, they have what we call a minimum germination rate. They will not put a packet, they will not put seeds into a packet unless they know that there is between an 80 and 90% germination rate for you. Not a 50%, not 40%, not a 38% matric pass. No. What is it now? What's the matric? 45? No, it's worse. It's under 30s. Someone can help me here. Yes. Anyway. No. 80% minimum germination rate. Plus, every year, every year, and often seasonally after the autumn, all those seeds are removed from the shelf and they are discarded. 
burnt, trashed, and new seeds are brought to put onto the shelf. And, and that's important for you to understand. Okay, so, um, so they really do go like, like the extra mile to make sure that we can be better gardeners. Okay, who else is here? Who else is here? Um, uh, ba, 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 ba. Right, let me go up to here. Let me go up to here. Um, oh, I've got sniffles. Um, I love small gardens because I'm starting to garden. Excellent. I fell in love with watching you when I went into gardening. Also did agricultural and environmental classes. Well done. You can adopt a whole lot of that into what you're doing. Um, uh, Sybil says, um, well, Jean, we must work in the garden before the rain comes. Yeah, well, there we go. Tell each other what they've got to do. Yes. Um, uh, Joe picked celery and garlic. Garlic, you lucky fish. You lucky fish. Well done. Well done. Rowena's got broccoli, carrots, and baby cabbage. <sighs> yummy, yummy, yummy. Okay, so you guys are there. You guys are there. Okay, so what can we be sowing now? So what can we be sowing now? Um, folks, there's a, a lot that you can sow, and even if you're in the colder areas, so even if you are where there is frost, where you're getting minuses, uh, we were in the Vol Triangle um, two days ago, and... The day before it was minus five. Minus five. That's, that's fresh, baby. That is fresh. Does that mean that you cannot grow, that you cannot germinate? Absolutely not, because there are ways and clever ways that we can get around it. Okay. So right now, we should be looking at the following. All your brassicas. Okay. What are brassicas? Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, um, cauliflower, cabbage, all of your kale family. Okay, so um, there are so many different kales available on the market and guys, they are dead easy to grow. Uh, within a couple of weeks, you'll be harvesting and the more you pick, the more leaves they make. Okay, the more leaves they make. Also in terms, now it's broad bean time. It is broad bean time and that's why if you want those beautiful soups um, with big, fleshy, yummy broad beans, now is the time to put them in. And remember, broad bean has the most beautiful flower as well, which is also edible. Of course, it's sugar snap peas. I mean, aren't they lovely? Sugar snaps are, and, and this has been delicious. And then it's your beans, whether it's climbing beans, um, whether they're the long beans, it's now, it's time for these now. Um, so you really can go wild. Of course, it's your carrots, um, it's your radishes, it's all of those that we can still put in. Beets, any of your beets you can still put in, and of course your Swiss chard. So how do we get around if it's cold? How do we get around if we need to germinate these things? Now, guys, I'm not going to show you germination or how to sow seed because we've done that a million times. And if you go onto my YouTube channel, um, which is called Garden Tube, you can just search there and you can find out how to sow seed like a rock star. Um, so check that out. You know there are a few critical ingredients that you need. All right, so if we're trying to beat nature, um, how do we do it? But before I get to that, the first thought is, how am I going to do this veggie garden? What am I going to do? I've got a space this big, postage stamp. So what am I, what am I going to do? What will suit me best? So to start off with, I want to go through a few veggie garden designs and ways that we can optimize space, maximize space. Okay? So whether it's small or large, this is what I want you to think about. Now, if you're limited for space, here are a couple of options. Take a look at them, and guys, it can truly work for you. So, let's start out over here. Now, number one are these veggie boxes. Now, I really like these because these are not from pine. They are from Seligna. Seligna is the gum tree, and guys, these things are tough. Let me tell you, they are tough. Seligna is a hardwood, um, and you can get various sizes. Um, and a little veggie box is fantastic. And to show you how hard this wood is, um, I just want to... So this is my staple gun. Um, and if I don't press the staple gun down, this staple actually battles to get in here. Um, Seligna will last you forever, as opposed to one of the pine boxes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and with this, as long as you've got the sun, 
um, you can start doing all sorts of different arrangements of how to grow your veggies. So we could do it like that. If we limit it for space, we could do something like that. So then we've got one on top of the other. And so we could then even pack higher. Okay, so this is a really cool way in terms of anyone that's limited for space. But the trick here, guys, is as follows. And of course, you could make your own. I mean, it's really simple and you can pick these boxes up anywhere. Um, but I will just, as a caution, is remember that if it is pine, it's not going to last all that long. But this is the trick. And it's this stuff here, guys. It's called weed guard. And it's so important that you use this and not plastic, not a black bin bag. I mean, they're, they're very ugly. They're very, very ugly. So... Um, and plus, it starts breaking apart, the sun beats down on it. A bin bag is not made for gardening, okay, except when you're making leaf mold. That's why you use Weed Guard, which is in fact, um, this is recycled um, plastic bottles. Recycled plastic bottles um, create this. And you know that you use this when you're putting down gravel, but what we use it for is we use it to put on the inside of the boxes. Okay, so all you're doing is you're opening it up, getting it in there, and that's where the staple gun comes in, and you line it, okay, and you don't need to be fancy about this. You know, even if it sticks out a bit, don't worry about that, because if, you've, if you put it in, okay, don't try, and, don't try and be fancy about it. If it's sticking out, all you're going to do is just trim it off in the end. So, you know, this is not a, this is not a work of art, this. This is about practicality. So, the trick about the weed guard is the weed guard keeps the soil in. It also helps with moisture. Plus, it's not going to let the soil fall through. And if some of you want to do pallet gardening, which is really cool, get a pallet, and all you're going to do, cut that pallet in half. You can arrange them as you want in your garden, tie them together with cable ties, and all of a sudden, you've got a raised garden bed. Yeah, easy. And the stuff you're going to use in the, in the pallets to keep all the soil in is, of course, weed guard. So, okay. So that's that. Um, now, other things that we can use. Let's get those guys out the way. Um, oh, and if you are growing in here, don't, 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 don't think that, oh my goodness, I'm growing in here, I can only grow flat things. Absolutely not. Um, you could do something as simple as this, which is these little concertina guys, which we use so much in the garden. So you pop it in the back there. Put these guys at the back, two little stakes, and all of a sudden you've got something vertical. So you could put your climbing beans on here, you could put your sweet peas, you could put your, um, your sugar snaps. So that's giving you heart. Okay, so nice and easy, and when those are over, then you just keep it aside. Um, we've had this one and we've reused it so many times in the garden. It's like years, absolute years. Veggie gardeners should never be without these guys. Um, uh, little uh, bamboo stakes uh, because they always come in so handy and you can use those to make the little wigwams, you can use them to make kinds of trellises um, or even a form of scaffolding, especially when you're growing tomatoes. Okay, right, let's get that out the way and let's show you some others. Mace, you can stay there because um, I'm going to show you something else. Right, now, although it's not potato season, okay, this bag can be used for several applications. So um, take a look out. And the problem is when you go shopping and you're looking for something like this, they, they merchandise, they fold it flat into this bag. You can't even see what it is. It's normally at the bottom of the shelves and it, it, it's dusty and, and whatever. So, um, but keep a look out for these because this is a stabilized um, uh, plastic, which has got a mesh inside it. And this... Okay, it's got the handles. So here's, here's your veggie garden. Yeah, yeah. You get a few of these and away you go. But although it's not potato season now, but you are going to start getting those early spring. Okay, early spring, you are going to start growing your own potatoes. But uh, this is a potato bag. And why is it a potato bag? Because of this. Look here. So you open that up there. Okay. And when your potatoes have grown, then you put your hand in there and you pull out your potatoes. But it doesn't mean that we can't use it for something else. So that's about dual purpose. 
these work brilliantly, especially if you're limited for space. Those folks that are renters um, or that you've got a little patio and you want to be able to grow, this works brilliantly. Okay, so that's out the way. Now, um, oh, I want to show you this stuff, but guys, when, when I open this up, this thing has a life of its own and um, it could attack me. Uh, <laughs> but if you've got quite a big garden and you know, this, this little concertina trellising that I showed you gets a bit expensive. I, I get that, I get that. Um, but if you're wanting to grow um, a larger area with say climbing beans, um, cucumbers, uh, whether it's even baby gems, uh, then you want to go with something like this. Once again, we don't actually know what it is in the packaging, but this is what we call just as typical garden veggie netting. Okay, so all this is is popping in some stakes, okay, a few cable ties, and there you've got it. It can be reused over and over again, and it can also help if you're trying to protect your garden from the minkies. The minkies. Monkeys, monkeys. Okay, so it does work well. Um, as a little cover, and you know one of the easiest ways um, as a cover is to take this and listen up carefully, you get some conduit. You know the stuff that, um, that, that they use in electrical? Do we have any around here? No, electrical piping, you know that, that white stuff? Get some conduit, and all you do is you buy a few lengths of that, you stick it in the ground, and what we normally do is, is we stick a um, one of these, uh, a stake, uh, a metal stake, stick it into the ground on this side and on that side of the veggie bed, okay? Put the conduit in and then you just fold it over and pop it into that side, okay? And then you do that in intervals all the way along, cover it with this, and you've got a covered veggie garden that the birds, the monkeys won't get to. Okay, right. Um, okay, another way to create a raised garden, um, and raised veggie gardening is the way to go, guys. Um, if, you've, if you've had a veggie garden on the floor level, um, you will know, you will know that it's much better uh, to raise the veggie garden. And a quick and easy way to raise a veggie garden is using some of this. Now, this is your common log edging. Uh, guys, you can pick it up at almost every garden center. Um, it comes in two meter rolls bound together and all you do is you either dig a little trench and you bury it in, okay? But um, you don't have to do that. You can also just get some stakes, pop the stakes in, hammer them in, okay? Cable tie, the cable tie. Hammer it in and you can create any shape that you're wanting. Uh, this is treated, so it's not gonna rot away uh, it's going to last you for a good few years, but this, once again, is a nice, easy way to create um, a good raised garden. Um, simple. And you get them in different heights as well, so you can start playing around with that. But, you know, with all these gizmos and gadgets, a raised veggie garden can be something as simple as an old wheelbarrow. We don't have to be fancy, guys, as long as it can hold soil. Um, so, an old bath. Um, I've got two baths in, in our veggie garden and they, they're fantastic. Um, there's a raised veggie garden. So you don't have to have the newest, the fanciest um, to be able to, to do a veggie garden. It's as simple as that. Alrighty, right, let me get myself off the floor if I can. Um, right guys, let's come over here. I wanna come to the whiteboard and I wanna give you some very quick ideas on, on different garden designs if you are considering implementing something in, in your veggie garden. Now remember, this doesn't have to be brick and mortar. It most certainly doesn't have to be with foundations. It can be created literally just with cinder blocks, all right, which is your, your normal blocks, can be created with that. Um, it can be created with some corrugated iron, as long as it can hold something. So here are a couple of ideas which I want you to consider in your space. Remember, there's a golden rule that your bed should not be more than 1.5 meters, never. Remember, because you want to be able to get access, here I am, from this side and from that side. 
Too wide a garden bed? Uh -uh. Somebody's crawling through the cabbages. Okay, it makes it really difficult to get to. So in terms of your space, you can either do long beds like that. Okay, nice and easy. Or you could do something a bit more formal. So you could then create some raised spaces. And I would make one of these a compost heap. Okay, all right. There's, there's some options there. And other ways is, which I really like, especially if you've got walls, say this is a fibercrete wall over here, a wall in your courtyard or wherever, you then use that to create your height. A bit of trellis up here, trellis on the wall, even the options that I've shown you. There's your first garden bed right here. And remember, your tall things up here, your climbers, medium height, and then lower ones in the front. Okay. But one of the most successful veggie garden designs has to be this. And it's called the keyhole garden design. And it's been around for centuries, absolute centuries. Um, but folks, it, it is really one that works. And a keyhole garden design, I'm going to give you a basic explanation of it here. But if you want to know more about it, just go and Google it. You'll find, you'll find so many different ways of doing it. But it's really simple. It's a raised garden, and this is how you do it. Find the area, put a peg in, it's three meters. Three meters circumference, okay? Right. You can raise this however you want with that log edging that I showed you. Yeah. You can even get those rolls of green plastic stuff, you know? Okay, my circle's not looking very circular here. Um, but let's fix that. Okay, so, so that's it. So important that this here, oh my gosh. Okay, this is three meters. Okay. Your, sorry, I beg your pardon, your three meter diameter there. Okay, there, across there. So we got 1.5 here. All right, keyhole garden explains like a keyhole. In one area, we've got an entrance. This entrance must go in, can go in straight like that and must be 50 centimeters. Okay, in the center, you create another circle using this, okay, using this stuff. Now my proportions are a bit out because this is actually much closer, like that. So this is where you walk into the garden. Remember, it's 1.5, so that you're able to still get in there. You are able to still work the space. But in here, this is where the trick comes in. In here, you're going to use the same edging to create this raised. That is the same height as that. But in here, you're going to use something like this mesh, okay, with some stakes. You could even use weld mesh, you could use a bit, of, um, a bit of wire, and you're basically creating a mini compost heap in the center of your keyhole garden. A mini compost heap. So this actually is going to go in a bit further. So any waste that you are picking from your garden, dead leaves, um, veggies that have bolted, gone over, you're going to take that waste and you're going to put that into here. Okay, that then layers up, forms your compost heap, because we have got something that it can move through. All of that nutrition is then filtering into your veggie garden. So it's a complete cycle. It works brilliantly. For small spaces, you can adjust this according to the space that you have. And remember, there are cheap, easy ways that you can create something like this. Now, um, that's Keyhole Garden. Think about it, try and do it, because uh, it, yeah, it, it's fantastic. And I love the fact that we're using anything, we're using it in here. So you're feeding back what you're taking out, you're feeding back, um, which really, really works well. Now, we spoke very, very briefly about ways to trick nature. And certainly here is one of the easiest ways to trick nature. We've got a couple of these around the veggie garden and they are inexpensive, guys. They really are inexpensive. Um, you pick them up in a kit form and we put them together and we've got them all over, whether we're wanting to germinate, uh, just get a few things going. And here we go, we, we put them in here to germinate. Here we've got some, um, uh, some squash coming through, we've got some peas. And as soon as they've germinated and we've got them going, we then pop them into the garden, um, okay? So that helps, especially if you're in an area that receives a lot of frost, okay? Another way is come over here with me, is of course, 
the unheated propagator. Guys, unheated propagator is one of your best ways of cheating the weather. Um, we sowed these oh, on the 2nd, 2nd of the 6th. Um, these are a whole lot of book by Fahey's. And look at them. Wow, look at them. But that's because we pop this on here. They're in a well-lit spot. And you can get stuff to germinate like a king. Like an absolute king. Okay. So, guys, there are many, many, many ways that we can grow, get away with things, work around the space that we have, um, and... And most importantly, get the most out of it. Right. Very, very quick tip um, is that when you are doing anything and anything raised, so whether it's a, um, a wheelbarrow that you're using, whether it's one of these planters, it's always important to consider your soil. And, and this is very, very important. You've only got one chance to get the soil right, so make sure your soil is good and proper. Um, but the other thing is, you also don't want to have to take out a bond um, to have to get the compost and the potting soil okay, to fill up whatever your container is. So a very quick cheat trick is to get plastic bottles okay, with the lids on, pop them into whatever your container is, okay, fill it up halfway, and then the rest, only that much, because that's all your veggie garden needs. You don't need a meter of soil. The roots are never going to, and if you do grow meat along carrot, you need to talk to me afterwards. Um, but, so, so use this, because this really, really helps. Um, two litre plastic bottles, whatever they are, inside here, rubble, you can put it in here, and it really does help as, as a good cheat. Okay, um, I believe there's some questions coming through here. Um, uh, let's just have a look here. All right. Where are we? Where are we? Let's have a quick look. Um, I had fungal disease problems with my, tom Ooh, with my tomatoes at the start of the year. Um, I can't implement crop rotations since my trellising is fixed. What else can I do since I've, I've read it, you've let it um, over winter in the soil? Okay. All right. So if you've got a fungal disease and tomatoes, guys, are like magnets, like pick me, pick me. I want a disease. Pick me, you know. Uh, tomatoes are, are crazy mad um, and um, I, we've got a little tomato plant here uh, that and this is one way to start them especially if you're limited with space um, there's two tomato plants in here nice and simple uh, and then this can be planted into the garden but here's the general rule if you're in a hot humid coastal area it's best to rather grow tomatoes during the winter months okay in the high felt because you don't have humidity, you can grow tomatoes quite happily during your summer months. Very, very happily. It's obviously the cold that then influences you guys up on the high felt or wherever you're in a frost area. But any coastal humid conditions rather grow during your winter months. Because then they are very less susceptible to fungal diseases. But what is important is that you can preventative treat. Okay, so you can preventative treat. Um, for powdery mildew, for downy mildew, and what I would suggest that you use, please grab me um, the um, Disease Pro. You can use EcoBuzz Disease Pro, and you use that as a preventative on your tomatoes. Um, but talking of tomatoes, let's just have a quick, quick look here. I want to show you how to get the most out of your tomatoes. So when they're growing, okay, and you see, you see here, do you see in here? There's a little, okay. There we go. This is what I want you to use because that does powdery mildew, downy mildew, and it's going to sort out all those. So you preventative. This is a biological, all right? It's not a, it's not a chemical. It's biological, so it's going to do the job. Look back here to the, your tomato. Do you see this shoot here in between this? It's what we call the auxiliary shoot here. So your tomatoes, there's your main stem, there's your side stems. If you want to get the most out of your tomato, okay, you see that stem there? I want you to just nip it off. Nip that off there, okay? Because then what it does is it forces these long trusses to go out further, okay? They go out further, further, further. And then you've got more air circulation. When you have air circulation, you have less chances of diseases. Yes. Remember, I spoke to you, we did the fruit trees a little while back. And 
And the famous saying is, if a bird can fly between your fruit tree, through your branches of your fruit tree, that means that there's good air circulation. So make sure, especially in, in crops that are susceptible to diseases, that you do have good air circulation. Okay, but anyway, never mind that. Um, Jean, uh, Miss Tanya, Miss Tanya, look at that. I, I haven't been called Miss Tanya. Miss Tanya, what can I do in the garden? Because our ground um, is like, uh, okay, what's that word? Oh, the ground is a coma. <laughs> yeah, your ground is in a coma and dry. Afraid of growing veggies. Okay, come with me. I'm going to show you how to get this started. Guys, very, very importantly, when you've done any of those raised, raised beds or even when you're preparing to plant into the garden, it's really important that you nourish the soil with the right stuff. So um, grab yourself a good quality compost, a good quality potting soil. If you're lucky enough, you can even get some premium. The premium potting soil like this, you can see it. It's dark. It's loamy. It's got beautiful stuff in it. Okay, Really, really nice. Um, potting soil has got a bit more river sand, so it's got a bit better for drainage. Okay. Um, and what I normally do in our veggie garden, and here's our beautiful compost. What we normally do in the veggie garden, um, in our raised beds, is that we add 50% potting soil, 50% compost. All right? And then, most importantly, before we're planting, we're prepping that soil with a good organic fertilizer. All right? And what you can do, here we go, 315 Good organic fertilizer. Guys, follow the instructions. More is not, is not a good thing. All right. Follow the instructions. This is a chicken litter based fertilizer. Handful, sprinkled round. Dig this into your soil. Prep your soil like it is the last thing on this world that you have to get right. Do it properly because then you will not you will not have regrets. You will not have to go back and try and fix it. Um, so guys, always, always put your best foot forward when it comes to, to getting in your right soil. So a mixture of potting soil, mixture of compost, and use a good organic fertilizer. Right, now, we've spoken about different designs, different themes, how you can do it. And a veggie gardener doesn't have to look like a train wreck. Absolutely not. They can look really amazing. Um, and what I want to show you next is a really functional veggie garden that we came across um, probably about a year or two ago um, in Johannesburg, and I want to share this with you. This is heaven, guys. Strelitzia Landscapes have created the most inspiring veggie garden. No, and it is in a formal design, this beautiful rope edging, box hedging and a central area where you can sit back and look at all your amazing veggies and all your hard work that you've put into it. And that's when you chill. For me, this garden is spectacular. Six meters by four meters. We've all got that amount of space, probably taken up by some lawn or maybe a pile of compost or something that you're not using. Think about that space in your garden right now and you could create this. Who said that an obelisk needed to be plain and simple? Oh no, splash of pink paint, baby, and some lovely rope around it. Yep, you too can have this. And it's literally just emerging like a rocket out of this garden space. Even in small spaces, you can still get hot really effectively on a very, very small budget. Four fence droppers into the ground, tied up with some nice rope. Ha ha, you've got sweet peas, you've got a climber underneath there, and Bob's your uncle taller than me, okay, and when you get bored of it, you just pull it out and put it down, and next season, put it back up again. Because you're planting a veggie garden, doesn't mean that you need straight rows, you know, we all like into this, everything needs to be in a box. Now, take a look at this here, I, I love it, I love it. We've got a row of parsley, yeah, okay, that works for me. But instead of putting rows of veggies, everything's been divided up into a little triangle. Like remember one of those little games that we used to make out of paper? You remember them? Yeah, you do. And then you used to open it up. Same design shape has been used here. 
in the space we've got some little red cabbage, spinach, bright lights, celery, and even some cauliflower at the back. And look how gorgeous they're looking. It works, okay? One and a half meters by one and a half meters. Keep your veggies in full sun. Make sure that they're well mulched and make them look gorgeous. And they don't have to be in the worst possible spot in your garden. They too can be prime position. In order to create some height and to hide this wall behind us, look at the clever system that was put up here. Literally, two big poles, CCA treated poles, banged in on either side. Some coated wire, and then pulled and tightened by using those little eye bolts. Whacked into there, turn it round to get your tension, and you can grow anything up it. Whether it's a vine, whether it's beautiful climbing roses, or even your green beans. All right, folks, so there's some wonderful ideas. I really, and I fell in love with it, and we've actually done it in our own veggie garden, those, um, those, those teepees. Uh, we painted ours orange, I think. These were, yeah, those were blue, but, you know, it's, it's, it, it's not the fanciest, and, and that's where we go. So now we've sown everything. It's growing. We've either planted from, from seeds or we've bought our little veggie punnets. Now what? Now you've got to feed. Now you've got to feed them to make sure that they are growing. Guys, there's a, there are a lot of options that you can use. Find something that works for you. This over here does everything. So it's got, it's got your NP and your K. What does that mean? It's got your nitrogen, okay? Nitrogen for green growth, all right? It's got your phosphates, which is for root, and it's got your K, which is for potassium, which is for strong growth, cell development, and strength, and flowering. Okay, plus this has got micronutrients. Micronutrients is your, um, your boron, magnesium, uh, calcium. And this over here, you can, and it goes a long, long way. And it's very simple. There are two ways you can apply it. Number one, you can either take five grams, which is, there's a little, a little um, measuring guy inside here. It's five grams into five liters of water um, and nice, nice and simple. Five liters is a very diluted one and that, you're going to use when you have germinated. So, so here, here, just let me show you something. So when you, I think I'm busy destroying the set, but never mind. When you are, when your, your seedlings have just started germinating, um, then I recommend that you use a, a less, a more diluted, whatever it is you're using. So if it says five grams into one liter, which this is five grams into one liter, we triple it up. So this is five grams or 10 grams into one liter. You dilute it, even if it's kelp. It doesn't matter what you're using, dilute it, because if you put it onto your young little germinated seeds, they are going to take a bit of a hammering. So it's really important. Once they then start growing, of course, then you can go into your normal dilution. So that is five to 10 grams into a liter of water. The other way you can use this is say you've got a whole lot of cabbages, all right, and you want to give them a bit of a you know, like a bit of a something. All that I want you to do is you just take this, you just take it, and I'll show it to you here. It's actually a, um, it's like a powder. And all you do is you take that and you sprinkle it around the plot. So it's really nice and convenient. Um, so take it, sprinkle it around the plant, and then you just water it in. So it's another way that you can apply it. There it is. Okay. So... Take it, sprinkle it around, and then you simply just water it in. So there are various ways of application, but um, whatever you do, just use it. Just use it because it's about that growth. And remember, healthy plants, healthy plants attract less diseases. It's common. It's a known fact. And so it's important to give your plants the right, right food and to keep them going. Now, before we get to pests and diseases, which I know you want to talk about, um, there are a few things that I want you to understand um, before we get there. And that's how to prevent those pests and diseases. So we've spoken about spacing. The other thing I want you to understand is monocropping. Please, 
rows and rows of the same thing is not good. That's where we want to now start including what we call companion planting. So come along with me over here and if you've got your cell phone handy, which I know all of you do, um, I want you to take your cell phone now. Mason is going to focus on this and I want you to take a picture of your screen because this is what we call companion planting. Now companion planting means that plants that enjoy growing well together. Now we know the standard, we know the one which is basil and tomatoes. They work well together, um, they, they sweeten the tomatoes, they, they love the same conditions. So there are lists guys and lists of what grows well with what and what does not like growing with them. Okay, what does not like growing with them. So here are all your options, lettuce, Carrots, radish, strawberries, beetroot, but not with beans or parsley. Also because when you're growing these ones together, number one, they're going to ward off pests. They are going to enjoy the similar conditions. And the other thing is that they are then going to improve the soil because some of them are what we call nitrogen fixing. Um, and they're nitrogen fixed, which means that they release more nitrogen into the, into the soil. Here's some other common ones. And I mean, all of us. Most of us as a gardener will have Swiss chard. Swiss chard grows with beans. Yes, we can do those now. Brassicas, celery, cauliflower. So plant these and do smaller groups so that you're not doing rows and rows and rows and rows. Because if I were a bad bug and I'm cruising down and I'm like, yo, look at this field of cabbages, guys. Come on, mates. Come on. Um, we're going to take that out. We're going to take those cabbages out. Um, so when you plant and interplant with other things, and, and when we talk about other things, um, we, we know what these are, guys. Um, we using rocket, okay? We're using rocket, which grows so nice and quickly, and you can sow it, and it comes up easily. Nasturtiums, brilliant, quick, easy. I mean, guys, you can't... I mean, if you can't germinate these things, no, no, okay, phone me. Um, but nasturtiums, once you've had them in the garden, they're just going to come up over and over again. Remember, this is what we call that type of companion planting, that intercropping. And of course, this is the poor man's caper, which is here. If you want to know what to do with these guys, please check out our, our YouTube channel because there's an amazing video on what you do with beautiful capers. High in vitamin C, remember that your nasturtiums also work as an insect trap for aphids. Yes, okay. Always have comfrey. Always have comfrey. Because comfrey gets used in the, in the, the compost heap. So grab it, layer it as a mulch across the soil. Yeah, as a mulch. The other thing you do is you just take it and you throw it on the compost heap. You can make your own compost tea with comfrey and this black liquid comes out in a bucket. Nice and simple, brilliant stuff for your garden. And then of course, the next most important thing about growing your own is to make sure that we have enough pollinators. That's part of the biodiversity. Because with pollinators, we get a whole lot of other insects that come along and eat the bad guys. Okay, so it's important that we have that balance. How do we do that? Well, one, we let some of them flower. Choose some of them and let them flower. This is a lettuce. I mean, it's been in the garden for a long time. We left some of the others. This we've allowed to flower now because the birds are coming along. The pollinators are here. When they are here, they are going to eat the other hohos and get rid of them. But not only in that and, of course, forage. One of the best pollinators, the bees just love it because that is the biodiversity that we need. Okay. Plus, there are other ways that we can add that and if you are considering this, guys, this is what you've got to plant now. If you want to encourage good pollination, um, getting into your garden, this is what I want you to use now. Easy, easy, easy is Californian poppies. Okay, get these in. Very, very important. And they are, sure, for color, for color and toughness. Okay, Namaquiland daisies. Throw those in because you are going to get a beautiful array of color in amongst your veggies. And book by Fahey's. 
And remember, guys, to allow some of your veggies to flower, especially something like rocket, because if you allow it to flower and those seeds fall, your next generation just comes through. Okay, now I know everybody's worried about the chokhos and the nunus, and I get that, so what can we use that's responsible? Guys, there are a couple of things that I want to share with you, nice and simply. Um, number one is snails, okay? If you're in the Western Cape, if you're in the winter rainfall area, uh, the snails are going to come out, oh, 100%. They are going to start doing their thing. Of course, we're all worried about snail, snail baits is a poison that's going into the soil. Well, well now what? Yeah, okay, not so good. Um, this eco bait um, is very interesting because it's, it's a, a brand, it's a brand that has been impregnated with iron, iron, F-E, iron. So, and um, remember snails only eat at night. So this over here, if I had to eat this, nothing would happen to me. If the dog had to eat it, nothing would happen to me, to the dog. And basically you put down the pellets, okay? The snails are attracted to the bran. Remember the bran is the carrier. They are attracted to the bran and iron, the iron levels, because they actually take in too much iron, kills the snails. Not, not, a, not, a, not a chemical, okay? It's the iron that kills the snails. So if you've got one dead Sally snail there, all right, and the dog comes and eats it, or the bird comes and picks it up, or lo and behold, the child eats the snail, nothing is going to happen because it is the iron that kills it. So that's an eco bait. Remember, of course, there's eggshells, there's copper tape, there's so many other ways that you can get around it. Okay, now, if things get a bit out of hand and like you got some hohos and nunus, right, you can go with something with a little bit more punch. This over here is a pyrethroid. It's what we call the ready to use. So ready to use, I enjoy the ready to use this because it's about Guys, you know what it's about? It's about time. It's about time. You've got to find the bottle. You've got to dilute it. You've got to then, you know, you got to measure it. And then if I've only got a one liter bottle, then I've got to work it all out. So um, this ready to use no more insects is very safe to use on all edible crops. You will see there's a waiting period, which means that the waiting period, if you spray your lettuce today, three days later, you can pick it. Okay. It's important that you follow it. And all those instructions are here on the back, underneath this. But this is like quick, convenient, grab it, see ho ho, spray. All right. And of course, of course, if you have got nasturtiums, okay, and this is your insect trap, because remember the, the aphids will come to the nasturtium before they're going to go to your cabbages or your lettuce. They go to here first. Then when they hear, You've got them all in a group. You're like, gathered them, gathered them. You've called them in. Then, psh, psh, dead, done. Or you squash them in between your fingers. Okay, but that's called convenience. Okay, there's another thing that we can use, which is also, guys, this here, Organicide Plus, is basically, when you open it, you'll know exactly what it is. So if you've got uh, caterpillars, if you've got grasshoppers, American bollworm, um, those nasties. Organicide, when you open it and when you dilute it, you'll know exactly what it is. It is garlic and it is canola oil um, and it is pyrethrum, which is an extract of chrysanthemum, the chrysanthemum plant. It's an extract. Any of you ever crushed the leaves of chrysanthemum, you will know what it smells like. It smells like, like cat's wee is the only way I can describe it, but pyrethrums, which is where... The, where this arrives from. So it's the extract of a chrysanthemum with garlic and canola oil. And all it does basically, guys, is it smothers these insects because of the oil and then it kills them. So there's no waiting period. Um, this will work for thrips. It'll work for aphids, red spider mite, um, and all sorts of other hojos. But both of these will do the job. What's the difference between this one and this one? Quite simply, Organicide Plus has got an additive in it which makes it work quicker. It's not a chem it's, it's, it's a compound. It's, it's not a chemical. It just makes it work quicker. So what we call the efficiency, the effectiveness of it makes it work quicker. All right. But both um, safe, 
Uh, and trust me, if you thought you had prawns the night before with lots of garlic, uh, you'll think you had it when you use it in the garden. But the fact is that it, it, it does the job. Um, remember, items like compost activators, always, especially if you're doing a keyhole garden, use the stuff around us that works. But guys, it's about feeding, it's about sowing, it's about using fresh seed, um, and there is so much now. I mean, and listen, 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 listen. If you don't have a garden, if you don't have a garden, we've been playing around with these things on our, on our windowsills, we've been using them in the kitchen, and these are the new microgreens from Stark Airs. Guys, look at them. We have tried, we have sown every single one, every single one we've grown. Um, so far, I have to tell you that, where is it now? Where is it? The broccoli was amazing. The pea was delicious and sweet pea shoots. Um, and I love the red amaranth. Um, so, uh, folks, it's really nice and easy. You can grow these indoors on your windowsill, and this is an all-year-round thing. So, it's a form of growing, getting your own. The only limits, the only limits that we have in terms of your veggie garden is what you Put on yourself but remember if uh, you're still a bit nervous of this thing called growing veggies um, and uh, what can I end up using in my garden always go back to your trusted source guys these are my magazines this is the gardener and detainee uh, these are the magazines that that we produce my team and I for you every single month um, what you have from my heart and from my head is in here every single month. Um, from what to sow, how to grow it, uh, what to prune and what not to prune. That's our journey that we choose to take with you. And of course, if you really want to pull out the big guns and you're into this thing called veggie gardening, then best you get grow to eat. Um, seasonal, it'll cover your, this one in particular covers your winter months with moon calendars, what to grow, yummy recipes, and of course, a few weird and wonderful things just to keep you on your toes. But this, guys, will certainly help you along the way. Folks, um, we're getting to the end, but uh, before I do that, a huge shout out to Stark Airs as our sponsors today for Macro Home and Garden. Um, for your support, we are truly grateful. Um, amazing, amazing, bio-friendly, great products, amazing seed, and of course, options that you can use whether you've got a garden this big or that big. So go and grow your own. Get off the chair. Get off the couch. Get up and don't go to the shops if you have to. Unless you really, really, really have to. Because you've still got to germinate them. But do it. Surprise yourself. Surprise yourself. It's probably one of the best gifts you'll ever give yourself. Most importantly, look after you and yours. Take care of yourselves. God bless you all. And until next time, happy gardening. The Gardener Masterclass was proudly brought to you by Macro Home and Garden. Visit macro.co.za to find out more about our range to solve most common gardening problems. macro.co.za And Stark Airs, the leading vegetable seed supplier in South Africa. Are you ready to grow? Stark Airs, seeds of success. Calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, the Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za.